Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Uh, I'm just here to give a quick, a quick update about um, Hurricane Sally. And then um, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you just um, what I have so far about the rest of the hurricane season. Um, this details the one may happen further. There's actually a lot of good news about actually the rest of the hurricane season. Um, but as of right now, uh, focusing on Hurricane Sally, um, that, it's very bad news right now in Pensacola, Florida, um, the, sh the Grand Shores in Alabama. Uh, the hurricane hit as of 4.30, I think, a.m. Um, I was up pretty much all night. I couldn't go to sleep. I was tracking it. Um, it definitely did not do what meteorologists were expecting at all. Um, it kept, the, the track kept shifting east and east and east. And then, if like, Pensacola, Florida was not even in the picture until, like, yesterday as of like two o'clock in the afternoon yesterday it just kept shifting east and east and kept getting slower it, it got slower than than meteorologists predicted and it actually strengthened overnight last night it was like 105 110 um and then like, i had to hit like the, so that's first landfall was grand shores and it started to weaken a little bit and then um as it got closer to pensacola it, was, it weakened to like 100 mile per hour winds and then from there it's it's been weakening. I think now it's a cat one with 80 mile per hour winds. But um, let me share a screen right here. I have the latest on Hurricane Sally from National Hurricane Center, and I'll show you what they have. So here it is right here. So it says uh, historic and catastrophic flooding, including widespread, widespread moderate to major river flooding is unfolding along and just inland from west of Tallahassee, Florida to Mobile Bay, Alabama. Significant and widespread flooding is likely across inland portions of Alabama into central Georgia. Impossible across western South Carolina, western and central North Carolina, and far southeast Virginia. So this uh, hurricane is not just a coastal threat, guys. It's tracking inland. And Atlanta, Georgia, all these inland places are going to see um, effects from the storm. Uh, possibly we're going to have flooding just like the coast did. Uh, but obviously the coast has got more storm surge. Good. Number two, life-threatening storm surge is occurring along portions of the coastline from Alabama to the western Florida panhandle, including Pensacola Bay. Um, I was watching Weather Channel last night, and uh, Jim Cantore, one of the uh, famous meteorologists out there, he was just, like, he was, when he was recording it, the water was, like, up to his, his hip line. So... It, it's the water has been pretty bad um, and it's still rising. Uh, I think right now it's starting to subside, but it was rising like this morning until like around lunchtime. It started to finally start to die down. Uh, number three, hurricane conditions are expected to continue this afternoon within portions of a hurricane warning area in southern Alabama and the western Florida Panhandle. Guys, some of this, some of the Florida Panhandle had like 20 plus inches. Yeah, 20 plus inches of rain, even in some areas like 30. So don't don't be worried about the category, guys. Um, you can have a cat one or like a strong tropical storm hit your place, hit, hit your area. But if it's moving slowly, it can feel like a cat three is coming because it's that and the duration is very, very long and the period is very long of that storm. So People are trying, a lot of people lost power, like around 50,000, I think, have lost power so far. Um, some of us, they didn't take it seriously, and now some of them are trapped from flooding. I'm, I pray to God that I hope they're okay. But um, they can't, so far, people can't come out to them just yet. They got to wait until the storm surge uh, subsides. So it's definitely very dangerous along here, um, along like the Florida to Alabama um, line. And it's going to be like that until um, Friday um, when we don't have to top up the storm anymore because it's pretty much going to be weakening and pretty much gone by then. Uh, next, I'm going to show you the satellite imagery of Hurricane um, Wow, Hurricane Sally. Uh, and then I'm going to show you what, um, what's in the Atlantic so far. And then um, this is what the rest of a hurricane season will look like. And there's going to be good news, guys. There's going to be good news. And I'll talk more about that. So here's Hurricane Sally right now. Um, as you can tell, not sp any spin anymore, but you can tell it's kind of moving to that north northeastward. It's moving north northeast at five miles per hour as we speak, um, as I speak. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely been weakening, and it's helping that it's moving. Well, 
doesn't really help, but it's moving slow, so it's having a chance to weaken even more. So maybe when it gets out to sea later on, um, it won't be anything until then because it's been moving so slow. Uh, here's what the uh, rest of uh, what we have right now in the Atlantic. Um, now don't be now don't be concerned. This so we do have to watch this one, the uh, orange one right here, the 40 to 60 percent chance one. It's meandering over the Gulf of uh, Mexico right now. Um, it's likely to strengthen in the next couple of days and a tropical depression could form by the end of late this week, they said. And uh, they have no idea where this is really going. So definitely need to keep track of that. Um, my, my guess is probably around the, somewhere between Texas or Louisiana, because um, I see it kind of move in that more for a direction in the next five, two days or five days. Um, we have Sally right here. Hurricane Teddy. Now, this hurricane is going to be probably the strongest hurricane we've had of this season. Thankfully, it's not going to hit the U.S. But, unfortunately, it's going to hit Bermuda, uh, more than likely. And, Ber and Paulette, or over here, hit Bermuda, like, a couple of days ago. Um, so, Bermuda is definitely does not need another hurricane hitting there. Uh, we'll see. Uh, some models have it to the west of Bermuda. Some have it to the east. We better hope that um, at least people at uh, um, Bermuda better hope that it moves to the west or east of them. They do not need a direct hit. Then we have Vicky over here. Um, it's it's going to be moving west and then west southwest until and then it's going to dissipate. So really no concern there. And this yellow disturbance, um, not really going to form. I'm not expecting it's going to dip south and then uh, move to the east or on the, along with Europe. It's not really going to be a problem for Europe. Uh, but this one down here, 99, no, 98L. This one um, has the greatest chance of becoming a, a tropical storm or hurricane. Uh, the good news is there's a trough around like a high ridge along the Caribbean Sea, and it could move it out, uh, out to sea. But some models do take it closer to the U.S., so U.S. will need to monitor it. Uh, I have satellite imagery for Hurricane, not, wow, well, for an Invest 98L. And this is what it looks like right now. Definitely not anything um, rotating that you can see along here. It's basically just a cluster of thunderstorms right now. But it is likely to strengthen and it is likely to get to at least Cat 1 uh, status. Um, here are some of the models right now it's taking. See, as you can see, west, it's moving west and then it moves northwest. And then maybe it takes a turn. But, man, that... So actually, right now, this is that this is the latest they have. Only one model has it going north. So we'll need to actually keep track of this because if it keeps shifting to the west, um, U.S. could be in could be a factor there. So we'll see. I didn't I didn't realize that until now, but yeah, there's definitely new data coming in. Um, but I am expecting still this high ridge to pick it up. Uh, luckily, the good news that this uh, season. Uh, we did have Hurricane Laura hit um, southwest Louisiana. We had uh, Hurricane Hannah a while back hit Texas. We had uh, Isaias hit um, around the North Carolina area. And, we've, and we had Hurricane Now Sally hit the Florida Panhandle. Now, while that, seem, while that may seem there's a lot, that's a lot of storms, which it is, luckily we've had the worst of the storms not hit U.S., which is really, really good news. We've had so many, we've had about three or four major hurricanes actually curve north and head out to sea. Uh, very, very good news there. Hurricane Teddy, like I mentioned, could be the strongest of the season. Looks like it's going to do the same. Hopefully it isn't Bermuda. But if it does, it's going to go northeast and head out to sea. So that's been the trend of this year. Every storm that's been off Africa mostly has went west a little bit and then just curved north out to sea. Thank God, because we... We do not need a major hurricane. We already had one, Hurricane Laura. That's been, that's been the only major one we've had in the U.S., but that's the good news. We have not had any other. Uh, we can't rule out an, like a major hurricane in October or something. But lastly, I do have a chart, though. Um, this is the very good news. Lastly, I do have a chart where it has the sea surface temperatures and the, uh, like the climate around the Atlantic Ocean. And as you can see, here is the North Atlantic. There's a lot of blue showing up, even some blue around the African coast, um, some around the uh, East Coast. That's pretty good signs because that means the blue is getting colder. Um, 
we're expecting we uh, meteorologists are expecting to get colder as it moves on later in the season, but it's a little bit colder on average. Uh, so that may um, hinder some tropical developments if waves come off Africa, um, which is very good news. Uh, we'll just have to see if, it, if that holds through the rest of the September and October. So that's a very good news, guys. I'm not, I'm at least hoping um, that that's, that Hurricane Laura is, was the only one that's major to hit U.S. I'm not really anticipating a very major hurricane hitting U.S., but it's 2020. <laughs> Who, uh, anything can happen, but just don't uh, count my word on that. Um, yeah, just don't put my word for it, but we shall see. I, I just don't anticipate it, uh, judging from this picture of cooler temperatures. Before I end the video, I do have a couple of verses I would like to say. Um, one of them is about temptation, how you turn away from it, and the other is about um, repenting to the Lord and uh, just being there um, in times of need for, for friends and all that. Um, so Romans 12, verses 19 for 21 says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coils on, on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, I love this verse in particular. I love Romans in general. But I love this verse in particular because it shows um, when Jesus died on the cross, uh, the people that... Um, that, that were uh, hurting him and they were putting him on the cross, waiting, uh, waiting for him to suffer. He um, he was kind to the people that were persecuting him, very kind. And even though they didn't show any kind um, acts back to them, uh, God shows if you have that same kind of kindness towards your enemies, um, then you're going to be greatly rewarded as you get to heaven. And it's kind of hard um, to be very mad at someone uh, for a while if you're very if you're extremely nice to that person even though it may be your enemy it's kind of hard to stay angry it's kind of hard to, to, to uh, stay mean towards the ones that you hate and, and it just shows right here the more you try the more um uh, the greater chances that uh you will make friends instead of enemies and the last one james 1 verses 12 for 15 blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Very, very uh, true here, because we like to blame God whenever we're tempted um, over a certain thing in our in one of our aspects of life we don't we like to put the blame in others especially god and we have to know he doesn't tempt us he we we control uh what we want to do for the most part um but it's that holy spirit inside of you that gives you the wine to not do evil um it, it makes you feel like crap uh if you do and it just shows right here that if you have the desire for temptation um, that sin can bring forth death, and and for symbolism means that um, your relationship with God is gonna keep is gonna be like death. It's gonna keep going farther and farther away from Him. Uh, so two very good verses there. I, I love Romans and James, one of my two favorite books of the Bible. But yeah, I'll end it today with this video, guys. I hope you liked it. Um, like, subscribe if you guys are new. I'll be posting. Um, pretty sure I'll be posting another video pretty soon. We'll see what that storm does in the Gulf of Mexico. If it becomes a tropical storm, I may be posting about that. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. All right, take care. Bye.